I'm Chris Herring. I am a prop maker uh, with uh, Sinister Props. I'm the uh, creator and owner of, uh, of Sinister Props. I make all kinds of, of either fictional or items that you might find in anime, video games, uh, either items that have been real at one point, movies. Uh, I make them a reality. Or uh, I take someone's concepts and, and, and make them a reality. I, I want to say that I was one of those movie buffs as, as a kid. I mean, I watched a lot of movies, but it wasn't like a really driving, uh, driving thing for me. But, you know, I, I do have my, my passions, and I think it carried over a lot into figuring out how to make things, figuring out how to build things, naturally gravitating towards, towards the entertainment industry. Um, you know, a lot of people would think, I'm a prop maker, you know, what, what are my backgrounds? Like, yes, I went to college, you know, how did I end up doing something where I would say uh, my expertise is less on the artistic side um, and more on the engineering side. I would say that, that my job is more of being an engineer than it is of being an artist. Obviously, yes, if someone were to say, you know, what would you classify me as? Most, like nine out of 10 people would call me an artist. So, and I'll, I'll take it, I, you know, I'll, I'll take that. So I went on to Etsy and I decided that I'm going to um, put the listing out there of conversions, like taking, light, taking people's lightsabers and upgrading them essentially. Uh, lightsabers, various different kinds. And uh, by the time I got my job, I had a couple of sales, like a, just a couple, working on like basic lightsabers to diving completely into 3D printing, learning how to paint. Um, I was watching videos constantly on how to incre um, increase my art, my art form, uh, how to paint, how to sand, how to get a 3D printer. I had a, got a 3D printer and I had at that Halloween, I had had my first best-selling item on Etsy, which just kept me at my desk like all the time. The pandemic was a, a brutal, like my job or what I provide is not a necessity, right? Like tr truly, it's not. Like people don't have to have a lightsaber. People don't have to have a prop from Marvel or their favorite movie or whatever. And... I, I was like scared and I was already looking at like, all right, what jobs are available and like, and I started looking and, and nothing, nothing changed. I would say that was the biggest where I had the doubt was, was smashed. The business didn't stop. So at no point did it, did it slow down. So when the pandemic hit, I thought, okay, so I was, I was wondering how long it would take for the effects of the pandemic to hit me. And I noticed that it didn't stop and people were still working and maybe it's just my client base were the kind of people who weren't financially suffering or maybe I was the distraction that they needed. Honestly, like I think for a lot of people, I was a distraction that they needed. And I don't know why I never thought of it earlier, but Master Chief kind of just ended up being the proper choice. Master Chief stands between 6'10 and 7'2. But I spent, man, like nine months making this suit printed over the course of months. I had printers running for months nonstop, printing huge chunks of armor, making them fit my body, lots of failures. Um, lots of sanding. Uh, I can tell you um, those last two or three weeks before Comic-Con, I mean, my girlfriend didn't even think I was like living at the house. Like I was just living in my shop, sanding. I had, I had actually sanded my fingerprints off. That's how much I was sanding. I had no fingerprints. Um, I think TwitchCon is the big one uh, where I think people know of me as Master Chief. Because uh, I got pulled on stage to to dance with Megan Thee Stallion by the crowd, and together they're forming these like dance groups, right? So they're forming these like dance circles, like kind of like mosh pits, but most of them are like dance circles or whatever. And like I'm tall and I'm huge in the suit and I'm just there 
and you know, there's videos of me in the dance groups and this is the floor, you know, it's the baseball field. I'll admit that there was like a thing in my head that was like, what are the chances that like this crowd chants me and gets me on stage? But I didn't ask anyone to do that. As a matter of fact, with the helmet on, like it's not like I was talking to anybody anyway. And I'm gonna be honest, my dogs were barking and I was real close to leaving, really close. And uh, <laughs> so she calls for any hotties to come up on stage and she starts pointing at people to come up on stage. This is, I found out a typical routine and the entire, it's TwitchCon, dude. It's, it's gamers and people just like, people start pointing to me and then the, the chant starts and it's the entire stadium. Like it's the whole stadium. And these are things that like, you know, the Rolling Stones, Rolling Stones wrote an article about this, uh, lots of places like Kotaku, they, they just didn't get this right. They just missed these points about this whole event. Uh, the, the crowd put me up there. And I found out later that Megan Thee Stein is apparently like a pretty large gamer, because I thought, is she gonna even know like who I am? Like what Master Chief is? And I found out there's a very, very good chance that she knew who Master Chief was. Like they call me up on stage and she's just, she says, you know, like, oh, like Master Chief. And then like the crowd parts, like when she says like, yeah, come up here, the crowd parts and gives me a straight shot to the stage, which is unreal by the way. I mean, the crowd wouldn't have parted for like that for anyone else. And it, it was like, I was, I had an unintruded walk through a massive, crowd, like packed to the brim that they split for. And then I had to go, they were trying to get me to come over the barrier. They were going to pick me up. And I was like, homie, you guys ain't picking me up. I don't, <laughs> it's not happening. So I went around and got to the back of the stage and I came out the back of the stage when they were ready. And that's when, you know, I, I, I put on a little bit of a show, but nothing was, nothing was staged. It was completely random, absolutely random. Yeah, I had a great time. She had some banter. Honestly, didn't hear anything. <laughs> like, honestly, couldn't hear anything. It was the hottest I was all weekend because the lights were hot. Um, I could see pretty well, uh, but I honestly couldn't hear anything. Like, when they were telling me to, like, get off stage, like, the guy had to tap and go because, like, I didn't know when I was supposed to leave. And it's kind of like not my fault, but <laughs> like, yeah, one of the backup dancers was like, oh yeah, it's time, you know, time to go. And the backup dancers were stoked. The people were talking to me afterwards and I couldn't hear them, but it was, <laughs> it was a fun experience. So I would say the future for me is, is definitely film. Definitely making stuff for film, working on films as sinister props. I want to be sinister props. I don't want to be hired by another, I want to be sinister props working on this film. And in the credits roll, it says Sinister Props. Uh, keep doing your hobbies, man. Your hobbies, don't sacrifice those hobbies because you never know what they might turn into. And, and if, if things change in your hobby, man, look into finding something else. Everyone's got that thing out there. And then there's groups of friends that you can relate to that can get you somewhere that you didn't even think that you, you could attain otherwise. I mean, that's how I ended up here. And I love what I do. Absolutely love what I do. It wouldn't change it for the world.